session start before starting it there's a small change over here so sandhya and suresh who are the both founders of your uh, asset lab image labs where they are doing a quite good number of projects where they have a incubation center at banariman institute of technology where they are playing a leading role in making up our students of data science in developing a small projects related to uh, convolutional networks and neural networks and so on these two people plays a key roles in our academic part of ramakrishna mission vivekananda educational research institute so since suresh is having some meeting and attending his meeting the sandhya will be continuing your sessions over there where she is good at mathematics also where she will be talking about the linear algebra related to the application part of the uh, data science in which she will be taking it of course uh, balaji t dr t vangata balaji who is a assistant professor of mathematics of iit madras who is being associated with me for a very long time since of uh, all of a sudden the sudden demise of his brother has stopped him to participate in this event however we had a talk about it he is also feeling to have one kind of an a talk with you all during the last day of the session that is on the fifth day that is on 24 he will be having at least 10 to 15 minutes of a talk with all the participants because his speech he is very much eager to have it so we will be having him with us later stages similarly dr uh, yes padmanabhan who is the ceo of easy design system who has to take up this introduction to python for python for data science he is also uh, own uncle his uh, condition is critical that is the reason he is not able to come in this session however he will be also talking for a 15 minutes as a validity session chief guest on 524th so you will be having both of them over here in our workshop also so thank you all participants for a patient listening now uh, by 11:45 sandhya will be coming to us to take up a mathematics part in data science where she will be focusing more on a linear algebra and the application of linear algebra in data science where they have applied a lot in image processing and what we call as nlp natural language processing uh, Uh, part, uh, participants sign was a little bit fast that was a comment which i have got it if you if you have any queries miss please you can ask up with us we unmute you so that any one of them can raise up the questions uh, yeah, participants you can if you have any questions you can put it in the chat box also so that we i i will be able to take up the question now okay in that case uh, we will be asking sandhya are you ready please uh, oh sir yes sir yeah just you can come inside uh, one second one second do you have to give uh, both the feedbacks from kalyani angan yes please uh, please we need a feedback from our, our own purposes for our uh, ramakrishna mission vivekananda education research institute purpose we have to give a feedback of daily sessions because we are we are in the focus of we are waiting about the speakers and we are focus on more about uh, what we call as the quality in which the speakers which we have to bring it and make it out these are the things which we are doing trying to do it that's the reason we need for both the feedbacks please tell about the test part see test part is nothing but 25 questions we will be giving it based on all the 14 sessions so it will be we will make it out in such a way that whatever the content which we have presented it as a video recording once from there only it will be coming up where we will be taking up the questions based on those things Kind of next next question it is kindly concentrate more on maths portion than on a python yes sir we will be trying to more uh, uh, concentrate on maths which we will be looking at so daily feedback link we will be sending up the feedback link to your email id so that you will be able to an answer the feedback forms in the, through a google form at the end of this day please not immediately so at the end of the day all the three sessions is a single form Uh, Sandhya, you can take over. Oh, thank you, sir.
um, good morning uh, participants so in this session um, we'll just have a um, quick go through about the different uh, linear algebra concepts that we'll be using in our uh, machine learning model okay so um, i'll be sharing the pandas uh, pandas uh, list of uh, Pandas list of collab files and uh, matplot list of collab files uh, by today afternoon and you should be getting the related content uh, possibly by uh, before today evening. So uh, with regard to that, if you have uh, any, uh, if any further clarifications are required, uh, you can definitely reach out to us. So you can just let, uh, you can let Shida sir know and we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to help you out. Okay. So uh, with with regard to uh, today's topic, and uh, I'm um, sorry, we came to know about um, Padmanabhan sir's situation only today morning. Uh, so you know, we happened to um, know about the scenario today morning. So we were uh, we are uh, we are using a PPT from one of the universities to get a. Uh, or to get through the linear algebra concepts and post this we we have a list of collab files which concerns about the implementation of ODE equations and using SymPy library in Python ODE partial ODE and uh, non homogeneous equations and so on so we'll be sharing the files along with uh, uh, today's uh, uh, sessions okay so kindly do bear with us uh, we were not able to uh, get the PPT uh, prepared in the short duration of time so um, we'll just have a, a quick recap of linear algebra concepts here uh, and uh, in-depth explanation of the different mathematical concepts with regard to this we'll be handling in the forthcoming sessions on uh, day after tomorrow right the day after tomorrow so uh, we'll have in-depth mathematical analysis there you can uh, you can feel free to ask us there okay so coming to um, mathematics for machine learning itself, right? So uh, apart from linear algebra, uh, as the uh, today, I mean, the entire uh, theme is focused on like mathematics for linear, machine learning. Like as of uh, like uh, as all of us know, Max has different uh, different way of analysis. Like we have uh, linear algebra, we have calculus, we have um, and we have statistics, we have probability. So and we have numerous other um, graph theory and so on that's with mathematics with regard to machine learning so um, we can say that four major topics in machine uh, uh, mathematics plays a very important role in machine learning let's consider a simple equation of y is equal to mx plus c y mx plus b all of us know about y is equal to mx plus b right so we have it and um, we have it for simple linear regression starting from simple linear regression till we go till the um, final uh, say neural network implementation too so if you consider y is equal to mx plus um, mx plus b so we have to calculate the slope or then we have to do a kind of multiplication post the multiplication we have to find the slope of the angle um, so when you look at the entire implementation of the equation itself on algorithm part we have uh, we have the linear algebra coming into it for the matrix multiplication a slope part which comes around with the differential calculus and then probability comes with uh, in the other part of implementation and so on so uh, on a, on a wider part, on a, on a wider scale, we can say that it's not only one particular um, mathematical domain that is responsible for, a machine learning, for implementing a machine learning algorithm, but rather it's a combinational effect of different uh, machine learning, sorry, different mathematical techniques for implementing a single algorithm itself. So here, what we are seeing is one particular uh, stream of mathematics that's linear algebra. Right. So all of us are familiar with the term algebra from the school, and we've also uh, been through linear algebra in our say in our undergraduate and so on. As we all know, matrix, special type of matrix, inverse matrix, determinant matrix, statistical application matrix, transform systems, you know, um, systems of linear equation, linear systems, and inverses and references, and so on. Right. So uh, like. When we say about matrix, the primary kind of mapping that we do to matrix and data science is image, right? So as we all know, what is an image? An image is a two-dimensional data, right? And um, on an even better, um, even an in-depth explanation, we say that it is a multi-dimensional data because we're having three dimensions, R, G, B, 
right so all this together so uh, whatever applications that we are seeing right the mathematical operations i i will be trying to give you a direct on interpretation um, with related to image more because uh, images are basically a two dimensional data so i will try to interpret more of that and also i'll just try to give you a intro or i try to give you an interpretation of what each mathematical part does to the data so if i take a mean what happens if i take a median what happens so that's what i'll try to help you out with this uh, session post this we'll go with the implementation of simpy with uh, i mean with the ordinary differential equations through python right so as we all know what is a matrix so a matrix is um, m cross n structure that has different uh, that has different elements present into the corresponding locations right so uh, the thing with uh, matrix is that the m and n can be different right so uh, when m is equal to n they call it to be a square matrix fine so coming to uh, matrix addition so what um, addition does onto data so um, primarily we all know um, any algorithm that we have we have come some kind of addition happening into it let's say y is equal to mx plus b so even there i multiply my m and x i'm going to add with my um, the other component b so why uh, what i'll like to share with you here is the uh, major application of linear algebra or mathematical concept is how i am able to apply that addition operation in the most effective manner for example we all know a square right the square of a matrix let's consider y is equal to a square so we are what's the regular thing that we'll do in our uh, in our say in a schooling days or like what have we be uh, what have we are exposed to i take my a matrix i take my a matrix and i multiply the two and we know the kind of uh, operations that is involved in a matrix multiplication right we take every row we take every column and we're going to multiply them individually right so it's like it consumes a huge amount of uh, time duration and lot of mission cycle is required along with that lot of uh, buffered memory is required in between because we'll have to store the individual values right so what happens this consumes memory and this consumes time both is there so the simple thing can be also implemented as a inverse into a transpose well, so using the um, using the properties of the matrix a square can also be given in another form that is a into a transpose so when we're doing that we are able to um, minimize the computation that's required for the um, for the corresponding operation to be implemented so what i uh, perspective or what i on my personal opinion feel that a wide range of linear algebra and its applications is used on um, minimizing the computation cost and uh, in effectively implementing the different uh, techniques or the different equations onto the real time and for uh, quick of uh, and for the quick uh, processing of the data and then going with matrix addition so we all know uh, what's addition and what it uh, does onto it so uh, here it's like the simple a plus b and then it goes with uh, the scalar multiplication and then transpose of the matrix so we are all familiar with uh, what are these basic concepts to do with and then coming to the diagonal matrix so uh, this diagonal matrix plays a very important role um, more uh, specifically when we are concerned with the singular value decomposition and also when uh, we do the other kind of uh, decomposition task right so in those cases uh, the, di the diagonal values itself plays a very important role and uh, the leading diagonal on a on a wider uh, perspective right and so even like um, say when we have a uh, cnn and deep learning based applications the length of the diagonal and the width of the diagonal is very important when we do lot of operations so in those case diagonal matrix can be uh, exploited to get out the most effective elements of present in a given matrix and identity matrix so we are all familiar so identity matrix is the is a diagonal matrix with the diagonal elements to be equal to 1 and uh, it is most often widely um, used as so used as additive inverse or like multiplicative inverse in a given equations uh, then coming to the upper triangular matrix and then uh, coming to the lower triangular matrix so um, a, a well known applications of this upper triangular and the lower triangular component is what um, one of the wide uh, known application goes with uh, feature selection right so when we have a huge amount of data it's very important that we um, or reduce the redundant data we remove the redundant data and we do the um, and we filter out our most potential information so that we reduce the um, mode uh, we reduce the total weight of the model and we get the most effective and most potential information so in such case what we do we let's consider a simple example uh, there's a technique called um, mrmr 
for feature selection. So uh, one application of upper triangular matrix is in MRMR. So let's consider I'm getting a square matrix and every element in the matrix is the is the value of correlation between my first feature and my first feature. So when we have a uh, matrix like that, so what happens? We get a uh, we get a structure in such a way that the most important features are pressed onto the upper triangular matrix of it. So what happens? It's more than enough if we are processing the upper triangular matrix than the entire matrix itself. So in such cases, with regard to feature selection, with regard to feature engineering, the uh, these basic operations helps us uh, get a better grasp of what is the hidden pattern present in the data. And similarly with lower triangular matrix and symmetric matrix and uh, skewed symmetric matrix. So we all know uh, what a symmetric matrix is, right? So A is equal, A transpose is equal to A. So we simply see what a symmetric matrix um, in terms of say property, whenever the in transpose of a matrix is equal to the matrix itself, we call it a symmetric matrix. But this symmetrical matrix plays a very important role with regard to weight initialization of uh, neurons. So uh, we all know neural network is a very a predominant, uh, a very predominant algorithm in machine learning. So there, the convergence of the network completely depends on the initialization of weight. So when the weights are more effectively initialized, the algorithm is able to converge very, uh, very quickly. So the training time reduces and it's able to reach its uh, minima point and the error gets reduced. In such cases, it's always, uh, it's all, with regard to CNN specifically, with regard to convolution neural network, we have uh, an analysis says that whenever the filters are initialized as a combination of symmetric and non-symmetric, the network is able to converge faster. Right. So in those cases, uh, with regard to the initialization of filters in a network, the symmetric property of the matrix plays a very important role. So uh, and it can also be in a regular image processing based task where we have a symmetric uh, window, where we have a non-symmetric window and the different symmetric and non-symmetric window plays different kind of um, different kind of operations onto the uh, data itself. <clears throat> so this is one application of the symmetric matrix in a real time way and uh, very, very specifically with regard to uh, filter initialization in a CNN network. And uh, coming to skew symmetric matrix. So this is an again a matrix with A transpose is equal to a minus A. And uh, again, wherever we are having a, a window, a filter, or when we are having a matrix, say uh, some other way, like say we have got HOG features or we've got some other features from the image there um, this Q matrix plays another important tool like how symmetric matrix does and coming to inner product so uh, we all know what our inner product is right so A into uh, Sandhya, Sandhya there is a question yes, there's a question that Euclidean distance matrix is yes, sir. upper slash lower triangle matrix in cluster okay uh, that uh, is being questioned by Ashish Zabri, who has put up this question called as a Euclidean distance matrix. Is also a neat that is, uh, is it a triangular and upper triangular and lower triangular matrix in clustering? Whether we are able to use Euclidean distance matrix? Euclidean distance matrix is also upper lower triangular matrix in clustering. So, like, is it a question or like, so is it a statement that uh, that we are? I mean, like that you're trying to tell. I don't. I just have a small clarification. Uh, okay, statement, yeah. statement. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Euclidean distance matrix. Of, yes, yes, of course. Another application is Euclidean distance. So thank you, actually. Thank you for, uh, uh, yes. Like um, this distance matrix plays a very important in the technique called uh, KNN. So we are all familiar. I mean, like we have heard about KNN, right? The nearest neighbor. So where the distance plays a very important role. And similarly in clustering. So where uh, based on the distance, we make a simple K-means clustering, where we cluster it based on the distance, right? So in those cases also, like the data comes in terms of a matrix and this upper triangular and lower triangular uh, goes, um, goes an important, uh, plays an important role in those scenarios also. So A into B. So like we don't find a single machine learning algorithm without the implementation of A into B, right? Starting from a simple regression to uh, say any complex thing, everywhere there's an inner product. But what uh, what linear algebra comes into picture or like where it comes into picture is like how the inner product operation basically happens. So for example, let's take a um, let's take a convolution operations. Let's take a basic image filtering operation where I have a low pass filter and a high, a high pass filter to be applied onto image. So what do we do? I take a small low pass filter of three cross three. I slide it across my window 
of the MIH and I get the uh, corresponding output, right? So what do internally what convolution does? Convolution is nothing but a repeated multiplication combined with the addition. So we do a kind of a dot product um, based multiplication followed by a addition in terms of uh, directly, I mean, when we do mathematically hand calculated, but internally, if we look the way the um, uh, the way, let's say Keras framework itself, right? So the way the way Keras framework handles the data is completely different. So what happens? It once we get the three cross three kernel, instead of having the data as such in a three cross three kernel, it just flattens it. So from three cross three, it changes into one cross nine. And the image, let's consider it's 32 cross 32. So from 32 cross 32, it just flattens it into some of the uh, 1D data. And then the operation happens. And then the inner product operation happens. So why does the uh, framework internally does this kind of happening? So it does this to ensure that the computation is executed at a faster rate than the uh, regular, uh, than doing it in the uh, spatial based uh, multiplication. So like these are like basic applications where a uh, inner product is used. And similarly with regard to y is equal to mx plus v2. So where we multiply the slope along with the x component so they're also um, the algorithms are designed in such a way that we get to multiply it effectively right and multi um, next goes with matrix multiplication so we're all familiar what a matrix multiplication does and where it happens and it's definitely used in huge amount of um, applications so like these are all the uh, different algebraic properties which we have already seen right uh, we are already familiar with the computative property the added um, then it goes with the distributive property and so on. Like um, each different property is used in is used in each different scenario in different machine learning models. Right again. So uh, where every property is used is we'll see in depth in our uh, forthcoming sessions. And coming to non-singular matrix, inverse matrix, and um, invertible matrix. Like these matrix, uh, this kind of uh, checking right it plays a very important role uh, with regard to pca based applications right so what do we do in pca we um, we just uh, reduce the dimensions total dimension of our input data in such cases like before we even decompose the matrix or before we even do any applications we first have to ensure that the determinant does not vanish so the determinant uh, exists to make sure that the decomposition actually happens in such case what do we do the first check that we do is is to check whether the matrix is invertible or not Right. So in those um, in those applications, so these uh, these different properties happen to be different check marks or uh, different checkpoints. Like once the check, first checkpoint is done, we go to the next implementation. For the next checkpoint is done, we go to the next implementation. So, so these properties help us in ensuring that a model works more effectively. Right. And associated with every square matrix, A is called a determinant, and uh, like. All of us know what a determinant is right so with every square matrix we're getting a determinant and with every determinant we have two more values always coming with the determinant one is the trace of a determinant and the other one is the um and the trace is nothing but the value of the leading and elements uh, and the determinant value of the determinant itself so that's what we get the determinant output and one big application of the trace and uh, the determinant comes with the eigen decomposition so we are we all are familiar about eigen so definitely when we speak about linear algebra it's it's a big injustice that we do if you don't talk about eigen value right so what's basically an eigen an eigen is a an eigen value is the unique value present in a matrix that has the highest potential information right and um, so let's consider i have um, I have a wooden box, okay, a flex, uh, let's consider it's a flexible box. And uh, to that flexible box, I'm exerting a pressure. And that pressure, I give it in a, a horizontal direction. So what happens when there is a, a pressure happening onto the system, in considering it in a coordinate system. So let's consider the boxes present on a coordinate system. And I'm, I'm giving a force onto it. And the object itself will be having, a, will be undergoing a change, correct? And within the object, there will be certain vectors that did not undergo a change. Let us consider I'm having a cylindrical and my object is a cylindrical structure. In the cylindrical structure, when I'm giving it a, um, when I'm, when I'm giving it a pressure on the horizontal direction, what happens? My height component, my diagonal component will undergo a small change because of my external pressure. But rather, my bottom component, which is my base, will not undergo a change. My base will still be rugged right it the the direction it will not undergo any particular um, change of its position but rather it remains rugged only my um, 
height component and my diagonal component and uh, the overall surface area will undergo a change so let us consider we are mapping the cylindrical value to a vector space fine my height is a vector my diagonal is a vector my surface area is a vector and my bottom is a vector so when we see this vector space when there was an external pressure we analyzed that the bottom uh, the bottom vector do not have any particular um, do not undergo any particular variation it it remained constant correct so this bottom uh, the vector that corresponds to the base is called the eigen vector because this eigen vector do not undergo any change with respect to the external pressure or when we are, when the system is exposed to a change so this constant vector is called the eigen vector and uh, let's consider i'm giving it a push so when i'm giving it a push what happens it might have a slight variation right it can either go uh, say little the direction of the vector will not change that is the base will still remain base but rather the magnitude alone will change correct so let's consider from uh, 0 0.5 centimeter it moved to 0 0.9 centimeters so there's only a magnitude variation but rather the vector remains the same so this vector that did not undergo any variation is called the eigen vector and the magnitude with which the variation happened is called the eigen value so this eigenvalue and this eigenvector plays a very important role in uh, in RPCA and in numerous machine learning applications to identify the most uh, potential vector space in our uh, given environment. So uh, what happens if I'm going to take my eigenvector uh, and my eigen um, and my eigenvalue of a given matrix let's consider i'm representing my, my system of equations or i'm representing my uh, input data into a matrix and when i'm going to take my eigenvalue and when i'm going to take my uh, eigenvector it's going to tell the most um, prominent and the most potential feature information present in the uh, given uh, environment so in another case, uh, this eigenvalue also plays an important role in terms of decision tree, uh, getting out the feature that has the highest uh, or the richest information present in our given environment. So um, coming back, so if i is the identity, then determinant of i is one. So we know about the identity value. Um, I mean, the determinant of the matrix. And uh, similarly, it goes with uh, interchanging the row. What happens when I interchange the row and column? And what happens when two determinants have the same value? And what happens when I multiply a scalar matrix? So a determinant of P is equal to M determinant of A. And determinant of uh, the lower or the upper triangular matrix is always equal to the product of its diagonal entries. Right? Sandhya, so, is it possible? That is Sandhya. Yes, is it yes, possible sir. to have some kind of a coding related to this and show them? Because some people are asking for example part. If we can show, they will be better understanding of it. Uh, yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sure. Uh, if you are have that, you can share with them. You can at least display it and run it. Run it or show that uh, content. Uh, sir, uh, yes, sir. Actually, day after session, I mean, day after tomorrow, we are having a session on the dimensional anti reduction part, sir. Okay, okay, okay. That's so, in that, we will be having a uh, in depth uh, explanation with regard to uh, how we use this uh, concept, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, can you please illustrate with an example um, with regard to what? I mean, uh, that is, that is which what, what particular talks, concept? what the talk you have been having it now recently you have been talking about that matrices and determinants in the determinants part yes, how does you apply it that is being the question during that time only the question came okay, okay. So, yeah so i can just tell one basic example sir. so let us consider we are having a uh, um, no what is there, like, like a coding part running that coding part okay with re with related to coding yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. sure 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 if you have it okay if you have that collab file or a direct file also, you can run it or shoot it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so is my screen visible? Uh, no. We should have a collab file. Yeah. With eigen value and eigen vector. No, no, no file is viewing, please. Just you are this file only is able to be viewed. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Just try. No? Yeah, one second, one second. Yes, we are able to view it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so like uh, this is the list of uh, this is the list of uh, series that we'll be uh, sharing today with uh, regard to linear algebra. So, whatever the concepts that we have uh, discussed now, we have uh, we have we have the implementation part here, right? With uh, regard to starting with yeah so starting with ordinary differential equation so the first file goes with how we implement uh, od ode equation how do we solve them without uh, i mean with with the uh, scipy library with the scipy library um, and we use this derivative so uh, we have actually included this ordinary differential equations because like most of the machine learning algorithms uh, we do some kind of optimization right so our ultimate target is to make the model come to the minimum error so in that um, in that case the one predominant algorithm that's that we cannot remove is back propagation and back propagation works on gradient descent so gradient descent again works with gradient so to have uh, to help us uh, have a better uh, hold or to have us a better understanding of how ode equations are solved in python we have uh, given the first two uh, slides of how solving ode equations using a uh, simpy so i'm just sharing it so, so that you uh, so that they can have a self learn kind of thing because it's quite simple right we'll uh, quickly go to the next Yeah, so the next slide also uh, deals with implementing of ODE equations. I mean, the next collab file. And here we are solving it with respect to a damper system. Okay, we are solving a ordinary differential equations with respect to a damper system. We have a damper system represented and we are solving it with respect to, uh, we are solving uh, this with using the SymPy library and how the derivative is called here and how it is implemented, how we are exactly calling this. Um, d square y by dx square plus 2 uh, dy by dx minus 3y and this file uh, concerns with the implementation of uh, the ordinary differential equations right so here we'll be using the library called simpy so that's used for our applications with regard to ode the third one the third one goes with non-homogeneous second order ODE equations. So as we all know, we have different kind of ODE equations and different one require different solving. And here we are concerned with the non-homogeneous equations. And similarly, we're having a damper system taken here for consideration. And in the damper system, we have uh, the equation that has to be solved. And uh, we are using the ODE to, um, to solve this equation again. So the next one goes with the ordinary uh, differential equation extension. So how uh, we are having, uh, uh, how we are going with the general method for um, the ODA data, and the fourth collab file goes with the implementation of that. Sir. So we can just have a quick look once I share this file in the afternoon. And coming back to our interest, it, um, and again we have some ODA related content here. This goes with the equation of ellipse and uh, solving them with uh, with regard to tangent line, and uh, similarly. So this tangent line plays uh, helps us uh, ha helps us have a better grasp with regard to slope. Like as we all know, uh, when what do we do in a linear linear regression? We are trying to fit. We're trying to fit a line onto the data that's distributed. In those cases, the slope of the data is very important. There, uh, slope is nothing but, as we all know, it's a tan, it's tangent. So uh, we've just given some um, workout models here for us to have a better understanding about the tangent part of it. And coming to our interest here, that's matrices and operations, right? So um, we are implementing all our uh, functions with respect to NumPy, right? So um, as we all know, uh, what is a vector? vector has two dimension that's it has a magnitude and as a direction so here any uh, a dime any to any data with uh, more than one element present in it we consider it to be a vector here in numpy so uh, a simple vector can be given as a numpy array of u and v and we create a matrix out of it right so we just um, arrange different vectors to form a matrix out of it so this is a basic way of how we create a matrix uh, followed by uh, the dot product uh, vector 
matrix vector multiplication and taking the response. So uh, as we all know, we just use the numpy functions dot product uh, to take the different ways. So this is, the, this is how we implement it in terms of Python, the product uh, A into A transpose, A into A and AU and so on. And uh, this goes with getting the determinant and computing the inverse. So these two, um, these two functions are very important with regard to the previous, with regard to the forthcoming applications, like when we do dimension standard reduction or when we do uh, some other machine learning models, we'll use this uh, inverse and determinant checking more widely and then coming to uh, transformations. So um, we can examine the effect of multiplying a vector by a matrix and visualizing the transformation of a cube. So we just see when we multiply uh, two different dimensions, like what happens here in this particular uh, matrix. So participants, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry, like we came to know about the session handling only uh, post 7.30. So we were not able to, um, you know, get content uh, more effectively for you. If we had known it, like say a um, little before, I we actually would have delivered it in a better manner. This short duration is like helping us um, rush up more. Um, I'm um, sorry for the inconvenience cost. You can uh, definitely get back to us in the forthcoming sessions day after tomorrow for uh, the in-depth uh, explanations with regard to it. Okay. Um, so then it goes with the diagonal form of it and then uh, the determinant and how uh, how a variation happens when we multiply a a small uh, a two D I mean two different elements of two different dimension space, right? And then we get the transformation matrix and the determinant part of it. So how it happens uh, internally, right? And then we have the visualization part of it. So this goes with here. Then coming to orthogonal matrices. So um, we all know orthogonality, how important uh, role it plays with regard to uh, singular value decomposition and with regard to uh, numerous other machine learning techniques too, right? So uh, this particular uh, collab file will help us uh, have a better understanding about how this orthogonality check comes into here, right? So initially we just uh, import the numpy, we create a matrix with four random entries and we use QR factorization of A to create orthogonal matrix. Right. So we use, um, as we all know, to create orthogonal matrix, we have to do some kind of factorization technique. So here uh, we use this QR factorization technique to get out the um, orthogonal matrix. of it. And we verify, so as we all know, the property of orthogonal matrix is to like say Q inverse is equal to Q transpose. And we use this particular uh, operation to check if the corresponding uh, conditionality has been reached to determine if a matrix is orthogonal or not. So this basic checking, uh, we're just giving you the corresponding codes, I mean, the corresponding syntax for you here, so that when you uh, when you require these steps in machine learning algorithms, you can just take it there and implement it here. Right? So let's consider we are developing a novel machine learning uh, uh, technique to check the to check if a given uh, particular feature set has orthogonality in it or not. So in those cases, like, uh, um, we hope this helps you uh, do your implementation part in a better effective manner, right? So then goes with the numerical precision. So we see uh, even in a more precise manner, how much is the uh, difference that's happening. Then, the columns of Q are orthonormal and QT is also a rotation matrix and orthonormal columns. And therefore the rows of Q are also orthonormal. So with regard to the given matrix, we identify what is the uh, rotational matrix doing on and what are the orthonormal columns present in our given data. Sandhya, there is a question that, is there any difference between orthogonal and orthonormal? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, there's a, um, there's like a very, um, both are like two different streams. So one is orthogonal and the other one is orthonormal. So orthogonal is uh, nothing but generally what do we say orthogonal? Anything that's perpendicular comes under a orthogonal. But orthonormal adds even more properties onto the um, given data. So orthogonal, um, orthogonal part concerns with, let's say I'm having two matrix. I want to know if the two matrices are perpendicular to each other. So in that case, I go for the orthogonal one and the orthonormal is having a unit amplitude, like as Kalyani says, right? 
both are difference of and both um, both are different streams right so coming to uh, vectors and biases so uh, all of us are familiar with the term bias uh, we have come across in a numerical i mean in numerous machine learning algorithms we say bias we say bias like uh, on my simple terms like one simple way i always uh, interpret bias is we always say in the classroom that the teacher is always biased to one particular person correct you know, say we say that the person to be a pet of the teacher and so on i see bias in a machine learning model similar to that so what bias basically does is when i have a group of data bias helps me uh, figure out the most important component present in the data that is required for giving out the rest uh, that's required for giving us the required output say giving the prediction a better manner if i'm having a group of data one particular component will be a highly potential will be even rich than the other ones so it's important that i give more bias to that particular component so bias is again a trainable component present in different uh, machine learning models either be it um, either be it like neural network or either be it uh, regression in all those cases we have a bias to give stress to give more importance on one particular feature right so that comes with uh, bias so it's it's again an additional trainable component similar to weights or similar to other trainable parameters or coefficients that we have in our um, in our in our corresponding um, algorithm so that comes with bias whereas here we talk about basis so a base is a uh, is, is it's again a, a very um, wide area in machine learning with regard to linear algebra because we um each particular system behaves in a different manner when we are treating it in different bases for example i have a system uh, it's basically a system of equations i have three different equations i get i get a matrix out of it so this is the normal matrix space when i take the eigen value of it and this and uh, with regard to eigen value we have another space called eigen space correct so uh, the same uh, system of equations when i transform it to eigen space and when i look at the uh, values present in there it gives a completely different interpretations for example a value of correlation in a normal space will give us a different interpretation but rather when i take the same correlation in a eigen space the kind of interpretation it gives will be a entirely different value it will be an entirely different space so this is the kind of change that we have uh, when we um, when we uh, transform our system from the given space to a uh, another uh, basis space so basically the basis can be eigen basis or it can be a uh, cosine basis like when we take the dst sorry dct or when i take dft and so on so what happened from one base system i change my system to another base system using a uh, different kind of transformation techniques and the behavior of the system completely varies from one uh, platform to the other platform just a minute so for example uh, we are we are all familiar with covariance matrix right so uh, what is a covariance matrix tell it tells the variation or the variance that's happening uh, in my given system of equations when i take a covariance matrix for my normal system of equations it gives us a different interpretation but rather uh, let's consider i shift my basis function to my eigen basis value and when i take my covariance matrix there what this covariance matrix in the eigen system does is it helps us identify the uh principal lines of force or the axis of greatest variance so as data scientists variance plays a very important role right we are we always are very concerned about the variance and the bias trade off and this variance is a key important uh, factor that we can never eradicate out of mach machine learning so in such cases what happens uh, the covariance matrix is helping us identify the greatest axis of variance just by transforming my given space to my eigen space it's a small example and similarly it goes with the different examples too and let's consider uh, the fourier transform so i have my uh, given system of equations i take my dft to shift it to my fourier basis so when i'm going to take my uh, fourier basis and with regard to image right so it helps us very very keenly identify the frequency variations in a given image so these frequency va frequency variations will help us very uh, precisely determine the edges present in an image with regard to edge detection applications so more more uh, specifically with regard to medical applications when we have to find out the tumor or when we have to identify the uh, lung cancer based even like we have we covered right? there was a lot of research going on uh, for 
um, the diagnosis of COVID using chest X-ray. So in those cases, what happens? I have to identify a very small minor variation you know, present in my lung because of the COVID infection. So in such case, what happens? There will be a very feeble variation of my pixel intensity. So this pixel intensity, I call it a frequency variation, which can hardly be identified or spotted easily in my normal basis. So from that, we shift to the Fourier basis. And that's the DFTA. I, we take the DFTA transform for the given image. And in that, uh, we are exactly able to figure out where the pixel variation happens. That is nothing but a frequency variation. So variation pixel intensity is what we call frequency variation image processing. So whenever that frequency variation can be uh, spotted out more effectively in my uh, Fourier um, basis. So like... Um, it's very important that we try to un we try to have a better grasp of what each data uh, what each space does onto our data, like a DCT or DFT or uh, another big uh, uh, space or another big basis is a uh, wavelet. So most of us are familiar with it, right? So the decomposition of my uh, given image into uh, different uh, into different into different resolutions like we see the image in a single resolution but when we decompose the image into different resolution uh, into different uh, say uh, different levels ll hl uh, hh and um, LH. So when I'm going to decompose the image into different frequency components, we're able to obtain different textual informations, correct? So those textual informations that we obtain at different levels cannot be directly seen in my original space. So this is the kind of effect that we have or that we uh, that we apply um, in machine learning techniques with regard to real-time data and more and more uh, specifically with regard to our um, image processing based the same applies with the other kind of signal processing also yeah. considering the audio based yes uh, Sanjay, there is a question what factors yes, do we need to consider for selection of a bias value in neural network okay uh, so bias value so basically bias is a trainable parameter like a weights so as we all know weights is a trainable parameter correct so bias is also a trainable parameter we just have to initialize a bias and um, get it into uh, i mean develop a model with bias into it and the algorithm will be able to uh, determine itself what uh, to which particular feature that it has to give a higher bias with uh, regard to training so of uh, the bias it's not basically a bias value but it's about having a data set that has a um, variance bias trade-off so this bias comes into picture with regard to the collection of data set so the bias and the variance component that we see in algorithms is more more related to the kind of data set that we collect how my data set is distributed uh, whether it's let's consider I want to classify red color t-shirt and a blue color t-shirt. So, uh, and if I'm going to have more, say, uh, 70 images of red color t-shirt and 30 images of blue color t-shirt, my data set is biased and the performance will vary. So that's the kind of effect we have. So basically, bias is a trainable parameter. We are not giving a value onto it. We only initialize a bias with some metric and the algorithm after training itself will set the bias value. So what we can do is we, we can see how the bias value has varied. So let's consider initial set my bias to 0 0.1 and may allow my algorithm to train for 50 epochs so 50 iterations let's consider a neural network after the 50 epochs we see from 0 0.1 how much my bias has been changed right so whether it's gone to a positive bias or whether it's come to a negative bias so we can uh, using that we can identify to which particular feature my algorithm uh, because neural network itself is a black box right so as we all know so but with the value of bias we'll be able to interpret in a better manner to which feature my algorithm is giving a higher importance than the um, than the other features so that's about bias so basically it's um, the by the bias the bias variance trade-off it's it's itself a in-depth topic that we most often uh, relate or like that comes hand in hand with underfitting and overfitting of a network so as we all know for a model to classify well or a model to perform well or a required application it's very important that the model has a best fit it should not be overfitted so that it just memorizes the feature and it is not able to perform well to our unseen uh, test samples when i give a real-time test sample that was not present in my uh, training data in that time also the model should be able to perform well right so in that case what happens the model should not be overfitted but rather fitted correctly uh, that we call it as generalization we have a another error called generalization error we are all familiar with test error we are all familiar with uh, training error but another important error that we'll have to consider is a generalization error so this error will help us identify how generalized a given model is right so a bias comes into picture in that regard variance bias trade-off and to the overfitting and underfitting of the model right yeah thank you sir
So uh, with regard to basis, so we were talking about the wavelet basis. So um, wavelet, as we all know, like um, what it does, it, it's basically decomposing a given uh, data into the different things. So that was with, reg with regard to image. The same goes with uh, any kind of signal processing base. So let's consider speech signal. So that's a widely, widely used, um, widely, widely used, uh, I mean, now currently booming technique because we get a lot amount of data with uh, regard to the speech based applications. Every, one, every home is having a Alexa. Every car is having a Alexa and uh, every one of us use OK Google, right? So now currently we have a lot amount of um, speech data put into the, uh, put it to our network with the kind of YouTube videos that's getting streamed. So in, uh, again, analyzing my data directly in the given space rather than that, um, short term um, for your transform right so the discrete short term for your transform is another widely used basis function that's used for analyzing our uh, speech signals so basically on a even a wider perspective we see that um, this kind of basis and this kind of operation comes on to a signal processing level right so because as we all know all the data that we get in real time is a signal so uh, image is nothing but a two dimensional signal but rather our, our voice is a one dimensional signal right so uh, it's it's more of like understanding what happens to a signal when i'm going to do different kind of transformation and to different kind of cases so that concerns with our um, vector and basis right so uh, next coming to coordinates and to our um, rotations so this about what are the different um, coordinate system we have and uh, this about the rotation components with regard to that and then coming to the implementation of icon value so we compute the icon vector to get the orthonormal vector and verify the icon vectors are orthogonal and it goes with the implementation of Eigen vectors and um, Eigen orthogonal. So actually, participants, it was like a very short notice. Otherwise, we have a um, in-depth thing about uh, how this Eigen vector affects the feature selection. So like now we have deep learning based technique, but for machine learning, feature engineering is the biggest task. So that's what machine learning comes. And in machine learning, um, feature selection Eigen value is like most widely used uh, feature extraction, right? So we, we we do have a separate content with, I mean, we have a separate, uh, um, separate content with regard to that but due to short duration we couldn't just gather it out so if possible in the forthcoming sessions we'll try to have a in-depth explanation with regard to that and uh, next going with icon value and icon vector so as we all know uh, this is a basic equation that goes ax is equal to lambda into x where lambda is the uh, icon value and x is the icon vector so my given system of equation uh, it gets multiplied with some vector and that is equal to my lambda, that's my eigenvalue, the magnitude times the given x. So we solve it and um, that's like, these are the basic uh, steps that we go that we're already familiar with. And this goes with the implementation of eigenvectors, so as we all know, to compute it. And um, this, this, this is the kind of symmetric matrix that we discussed. So uh, yeah. detect if a given matrix is uh, symmetric or not and we've also seen about the applications and also with regard to non-symmetric matrices yeah so coming to diagnosing so um, yes most of us are familiar about the kind of svd the singular value decomposition and uh, how much it's been used for uh, for different tasks right the uvw and it has a widespread um, applications and it, it's it's like it's a vast domain and in that case this diagonalization of linear algebra is the key factor that is enabling us to split the uvw components only because of diagonalization we are able to get the orthogonal orthonormal and the different components and uh, and we know how it's used like for compression based techniques and for different techniques how uh, these are used right and uh, it goes with diagonalization of symmetric matrices so like these are the basic equations we'll have a, a view of it when we are looking at the forthcoming topics right so this is about the symmetric matrix and about the eigenvalue based things and it's about the power iteration we demonstrate a case where power iteration fails namely starting vectors orthogonal and the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue and we compute the starting vectors orthogonal to the eigenvector associated with the largest eigen with the largest eigenvector then perform the power operations right so uh, that's about eigenvalue and that's about um, eigenvector right and finally we go with the applications of uh, eigenvalue problems i think uh, we've, we've spoke a lot about eigenvalue and uh, the other uh, important concept is rank with regard to uh, linear algebra so basically rank tells us about um, 
mathematically what rank means is it tells about the number of rows with non zero elements so how many elements are present um, in a in a given system of equations in a given data activity so similarly this rank plays a very important role with regard to feature selection in our machine learning models where we are able to spot out uh, or we are able to tell the um, tell the system of equation of what rank it is right so that's another important application of linear algebra onto a uh, system of equations so i think uh, that's with rank so um, any questions from the participants any questions any questions application of rank yes application of okay. in pca principal component refer to one single attribute or a combination of attributes a uh, principal component refer to one single um, basically in uh, pca it's like reducing the dimensionality um, about i have a given system of um, given system of features extracted that has uh, 50 say it's like it has 50 dimensions one particular example is with related to height with related to hyperspectral data so in hyperspectral data we get a huge amount of dimensions right so in that case uh, we are just uh, trying to reduce the dimensions with regard to lesser um, with regard to lesser dimensions in that case we use pca to reduce the dimensionality of the given data uh, day after session or uh, day after tomorrow session we have a um, we have a dimensionality reduction into it and we'll have a more in-depth explanation of how pca works so multicollinearity rank can you explain eigen vector eigen matrix eigen value and its significance to physical system yes so um just a minute i'll i'll try to open a document that we have with regard to um, eigen vector Um, so there should be a, a window here with respect, which shows shear mapping. I just want to have a quick check. 
So is there a window that shows shear mapping? Yes, please. Yes. So uh, with regard to eigenvalue, so let's consider I have a system uh, as given here, X and Y, that's V1 and V2. And uh, let's um, let's consider we are applying some real-time uh, some real time pressure onto the system. So this pressure can be shear mapping. So shear mapping is nothing but some external force that we're giving onto the system. So what happens when I'm applying this force onto the system of uh, vectors, uh, we can see that the vector V1 has undergone a change because of the shear mapping, because of the push or that we have given onto the system. So from this particular direction, the vector has tilted to a direction, but rather uh, the red color arrow remains constant. It's not undergone any variation. So this particular vector, which did not undergo any variation due to our external force, or due to the external um, uh, pressure that was given is called the uh, eigen vector, right? And if we even look at a, um, and even if you look at a um, clear in-depth manner, we see that the vector is elongated. The, the vector has been stretched uh, by with respect to a magnitude, right? So let's consider initially it was five centimeters. And after the shear mapping from five, it had moved to, let's consider seven or eight. So this magnitude with respect to which my eigenvector elongated or stretched, basically it's kind of magnitude variation that happens, right? So this magnitude variation is called the eigenvalue. The magnitude is the eigenvalue and the vector that did not undergo any variation is called the eigenvector, right? So, um, am I answering to your question, sir? Am I answering to your question, sir? Yes, yes. Shiva Govinda Swami has asked it and you have put it over there. Yeah. Next. So, and with regard to, um, yeah, in which scenario do we go for shear sure mapping? So, um, I, I've yeah, actually mapped. The thinking about the last collab file you have run it. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, that, that one you can go by step by step to explain it further. Which one, sir? Uh, yeah, once again, there is a question from Jagadishwari related to the scenario. In which scenario which... do we go for a shear mapping? Okay. So basically, ma'am, shear mapping, I put it because uh, to uh, to help us understand in a map, in a mechanical manner, like because eigenvalue originally evolved from uh, mechanics. So initially, eigenvalue uh, was proposed uh, with regard to mechanical systems because uh, generally mechanical systems are exposed to pressure, right? In that case, we go for mechanical system. On a even uh, a better perspective with regard to signal processing, this shear mapping can be any different, uh, can be any process that gives us a, uh, that gives is a change so let's consider i have my initial data right let's consider a, a neural network okay a convolution neural network i have my initial data then i do some processing onto it right and i get my feature map out of it okay so uh, when i take the feature map uh, i mean i take the eigenvalues of the feature map it uh, it tells a different perspective i mean uh, we'll be able to identify what the variation i did or what the convolution operation has brought onto my feature map right so that shear mapping can be any uh, any particular system of equation that brings a change in a given data i already have a system of equation a and this shear mapping represents the vector x so that is ax is equal to lambda x correct correct so a is my system of equation i'm uh, multiplying my system i'm giving allowing my system to be exposed to some external pressure called x but to some external variation called x so this x can be a vector this x can be a matrix so as we all know uh, any real time uh, operation we represent it mathematically in terms of vector right when it is a force we call it with a vector or uh, if it's any variation we give it with a matrix right so when i'm getting to uh, getting or allowing my system to go uh, to some variation i call that as a shear mapping so anything any uh, any particular concept that's giving a change in a variation is called the shear mapping right
so uh, and also like um, there was a question with re with regard to rank of the matrix so like by uh, literally looking of the rank of the matrix we can tell like whether the matrix has independent rows of column or uh, independent rows or um, dependent rows of column or what so uh, this helps us identify when we have uh, data in a column in a manner right so to uh, determine to determine what set of features are interdependent and what set of features are not dependent or what set of features are independent right so in those cases uh, we go for the uh, rank of the matrix right and a rank has like uh, numerous applications like uh, for example the rank of the matrix will also tell us how many how many how many eigen values uh, we are going to uh, get so if a matrix has full rank so this means like the uh, the left and right null space contains a zero vector and it goes like uh, so on it's like um, from each application it varies like where we use the uh, rank of the matrix it's basically like properties for example uh, to check whether we can uh, decompose a matrix what do we do we first check if the matrix is uh, stable that is it should not uh, the determinant value should not vanish right so similarly we use the rank value for different uh, testing purposes for example when the matrix is having a full rank i'm having a 3 cross 3 matrix and my rank is also 3 in that case we tell that the given matrix uh, will always be a, uh, is also a square and invertible so we use this rank based applications to uh, as a checkpoint as we've discussed we have uh, different checkpoints right so this rank can also be uh, the kind of uh, checkpoints for while implementing our uh, machine learning uh, algorithm <laughs> okay so uh, any other questions Sandhya, that last yes. collab file which you have been showing related to the Google pages. Uh, related to, sir? Uh, that Google page ranking, something you have been showing it, the last coding part. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that one you take it up. And if possible, we can put in explanations on that. Is it this one, sir? Ah, uh, come down. Yeah, exactly, exactly correct. Again, I use agent of trust, and that page model problem you had given. No, if possible, yeah. if the explanations how does it works about it, it will be better. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, like, um, eigen value, like, uh, literally, eigen value is present in every, uh, every, every place. Like, let's consider. Uh, there was a case where a bridge collapsed in uh, US or London. I don't remember the place. Uh, the oh, reason to some some time back, the bridge actually collapsed because the a proper eigenvalue was not selected for the bridge, right? So eigenvalue is present literally in every um, in most of the real time applications that we do. So here using eigenvalue problem we have a description for two uh, problems so one is the page rank algorithm another one is the vibration of multi or uh, degree of freedom mass spring system right so first coming to the page rank so page rank is an algorithm that's used by google to rank the importance of a web page like when we do a search engine the first page comes out right the first page uh, the the search the search uh, order basically right the concept of this so like most of us are familiar with the search engine optimization. So it's something related to that. The concept is that every web page has a important score and it endows its importance evenly amongst the pages to which it links. So uh, the, the will lead of the problem where the ranking of all pages is an eigen problem. And we'll demonstrate the process for a <clears throat> small uh, web of four pages. So using the eigen value, we are going to uh, help us get the rank of the uh, different pages that's it that has to be there so let's consider um a web of five pages p0 to p5 and consider the scenario that p0 links to p1 p2 uh, p3 and p4 uh, p1 links to p2 p3 and p4 and so on so we can um build a directed graph to describe the connections and for this we'll use a package called network x so that's there the link with the github link here and we'll uh, we're going to visualize the graph with respect to matplot so we're basically uh, doing the we're trying to interpret an analysis and analyze how each uh, page is actually rated right we this happens so this kind of things are basically done in every website that we do in the form of cookies correct 
So note that the edges have been uh, given a weight in which is one by n, where n is the number of outgoing links from a page or node. And um, this is the fraction of pages importance that it can give to the pages which it links. So we are just giving a weight value uh, which is one by n to the number of outgoing links. Like as we all know, when we take a page, we have number of outgoing links onto the pages, right? And uh, each page is also monitored. We have special Google APIs itself to analyze uh, exact locations of where our cursor points in a given a page, right? So to that level or uh, to that much amount of data that we do. And this is a similar case where we are analyzing what's the number of clicks that has happened onto the given page. So if we denote the rank or importance of the page i by x, we can uh, express the importance of a graph. So uh, we are just uh, using this formula of one by n. We are trying to express the importance of each page. So our ultimate um, or the work is basically getting the system of equations itself. So uh, any real time scenario we have, it's important that we map it to a system of equations. So uh, this system of equations are then expressed using our uh, matrix format. So our work here is like to exactly map uh, or to get the system of equation to derive that x naught is equal to so and so x1 is equal to so and so so for this we require the expertise of both the field expert as well as the data scientist to get the equations done so because this equation is describing us the system or the problem that we are trying to solve right so then we are uh, having the system of equations here expressed and we are multiplying it with our uh, so it's there's a basic uh, explanation that we have a ax is equal to b that we've already seen in our um, yeah in the previous cases right so this is an eigenvalue problem with lambda is equal to one so to solve the problem we need to find the corresponding eigenvector so first we can create a matrix a directly from the graph Noted, note that we added the weights onto the graph edges while building the graph as we saw previously there were weights added, added onto the graph and we get the matrix containing the graph weight and we provide the node list so uh, this is about getting the node list and uh, the rows and columns of the data and the direct computation of page rank vector so note that the columns of a sum to one and such a matrix is called the stochastic matrix and in our context what is important is that the largest eigenvalue for such matrix is one so therefore, we are looking uh, for the eigenvector associated with the largest uh, eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue. Another important factor with regard to eigenvalue is um, always there will be only unique eigenvalue, but there can be more than one eigenvector associated with the uh, given eigenvalue. So generally, uh, for every eigenvector, we'll have sorry for every eigenvalue, we'll have two eigenvectors associated with it. That is the right eigenvector, and the other one is the left eigenvector. So most often, we'll be ignoring the right eigenvector. We generally say uh, every eigenvalue has an eigenvector, and that eigenvector is predominantly the right right eigenvector. But when we have a uh, yeah, I think I can just show you here. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, this is the equation that we generally know ax is equal to lambda x, where x is the eigen uh, vector and lambda is the eigen value. So, here in the in the page rank value, we saw that lambda was equal to one, the eigen value was equal to one. Generally, we say uh, there's only one eigen vector associated with eigen value, but um, basically, we have two set of uh, eigen vectors associated with a single eigen value. So, that's given as ax is equal to a into xr, that's the right eigen vector is equal to lambda r into xr, and xl. A is equal to lambda L into XL, right? And um, so the thing here is like most often we go only with the right eigenvector and we don't uh, go with the uh, left eigenvector. And we have a lot of properties related to this. Uh, it, it again goes as a, it, it's like a chain of properties with regard to Hermitian matrix, covariance matrix, and so on, correct? So coming back here, so um, when a matrix that has the columns of A sum to one, we call it to be a stochastic matrix. And in our context, it is important that the eigenvalue of uh, for such matrix is one. And therefore, we are looking out for the eigenvector that's associated with the largest eigenvalue. So 
it's important that we identify uh, eigen vector that has the largest eigen value because it's going to be the most important feature and that particular vector do not undergo any variation when there was a external force happening on it so when it has not gone uh, any variation this means that it has the strongest a uh, property that is holding the system of equation so basically it's like we are trying to identify what is the uh, what is one particular direction that holds the maximum property of the system because we are going to teach them algorithm to learn right the machine the machine has to learn ultimately uh, some it has to identify some hidden patterns onto the data so this eigen value is helping us identify that hidden patterns present inside the data so when we take the largest eigen value if you can recall the figure that we saw there was one red color bottom line and there was one blue color tilted line so the red color bottom line did not vary maybe there's another eigen vector also right that did not undergo any variation but we always opt for the eigen vector with the largest eigen value because that particular vector had um, allowed itself for a variation to happen from externally that it has allowed itself for such elongation or for such contraction but it did not vary its direction so that's the key point so that's the reason why we always look out for a eigen vector that's associated with the largest eigen value and uh, we go for the direct computation of page rank vector to find the solution we compute the eigen vector of a and pick the eigen vector that corresponds to lambda is equal to 1 so that goes with the implementation of eigen values and um, eigen vector and the page rank vector has been normalized using l1 norm and uh, norm yeah sorry i did not touch, touch up with norm so all of us are familiar with norm uh, like we have heard this somewhere or the other l1 norm l2 norm but this l1 l2 norm can do huge amount of um, it can do huge amount of uh, it can be of lot of benefit when we properly utilize into a data it has lot of mathematical interpretation uh, to to give us with regard to the data and to inculcate into the data so we'll have a, a in depth view of what this l1 l2 norm does in the day after tomorrow, tomorrow sessions uh, how kind of regularization can be done with l1 norm regularization with l2 norm what happens when we are varying the weight value with respect to l1 norm and how this l1 norm is affecting our uh, weight update with regard to gradient descent um, applications like as we all know we use this l1 norm for regularizing right we add the penalty uh, factor to get the regularization done so in our forthcoming sessions we will see how l1 norm and l2 norm uh, helps us in bringing out this uh, regularization value right and following this we go with the approximation of page vector rank by a power iteration so the direct computation of all eigen value in eigen vector is a expensive operation and can only be reasonable reasonably performed for small matrices however we are interested in eigen vector corresponding to the largest eigen value so recall that in most of the cases the repeated multiplication of eigen vector by a matrix a will yield a vector that tends to uh, tends to the direction of eigen vector corresponding to the largest eigen value so we can use this approximate page rank vector using only a matrix vector multiplication right so they have just given a justification of why we go only for the uh, matrix vector kind of multiplication so from this we see that the estimated page rank after iteration is of all the pages that we have a p1 p2 p3 p4 so this is the kind of ranking that we get and after 10 iterations so this is the kind of ranking we get so basically this eigen vector and eigen value as we saw it it is helping us give us the most important feature or the most um, most rich feature from a given set of data so when we are just arranging them in a a descending order uh, or we the first value will always be the vector that has the highest potential information that's what pca is all about so we'll see how pca does this in our uh, dimensionality reduction sections right so then going with multiple or uh, degree of freedom yes, sanjay one second yes sir before getting to the next topic there is a question that uh, is data science only meant for decision making can it be used for device development um yeah um yeah. is data science only meant for decision making can it be used for uh, device development so uh, so device development in the sense like what do you mean sir that is uh, it has been put by a uh, okay device. product yeah Maybe. so device development in the sense like um, could you yeah. please elaborate on the question product development uh, uh, yeah this uh, data science uh, yes we basically product product yes put it as a product 
Yeah, so it can be used for product development. We use different uh, different insights obtained from our data science for the uh, product development itself, right? So like, uh, basically, if you look around, every product has some kind of data science into it. We all use fingerprint uh, sensors, so that's data science, right? So we all use a face unlock, so that's again a data science. So um, it's meant with the decision making and also these algorithms uh, go into um, are directly deployed onto the device as such. I, um, rather than saying can it be used, for, yes, it is used for device development in manufacturing kind of industries. And in more in a even wider perspective, it directly gets deployed onto the device itself. Right? We all have Fitbit watch, right? Though it has some pressure sensors into it, so it gets the data from the uh, from our uh, from our body and it does some processing in our in our. Uh, you know in the phones so similarly it goes so it's it's deployed onto the device and it's also used in manufacturing with, uh, with regard to device development so yes we'll be covering hypothesis inference and optimization part we'll be uh, having all the um, optimization uh, with regard to svm and the session of svm we'll be getting this i'll be sharing all the codes the ode codes with simpy to uh, so help in improving the models yes we'll uh, we'll talk about regularization part we'll talk about uh, optimization uh, underfitting and overfitting problems uh, we'll be having a, a in-depth explanation of that too right so uh, any more queries um yeah you can go with that last model which you have been trying to explain so, yeah Um, so uh, before I just go, like um, there was a uh, there was a question with related to multicollinearity before yeah, with, with, okay. along with that. yeah. So multicollinearity is basically like it's um, it's just telling us that two or more features are more related, uh, more um, two or more features are more related, uh, and this multicollinearity basically comes into picture when we go for regression, uh, the polynomial regression, or when we have a multiple regression, right? And so in that case, like uh, collinear that's where collinearity comes. So multicollinearity occurs when two or more independent variables are highly correlated with one another in a regression model, basically. So on a like on a definition on a definition perspective, it happens when two or more independent variables are uh, very much highly correlated, right, uh, with regard to our regression tasks. That's uh, basically about multicollinearity. And then okay. last part you can explain it and uh, I think within the yeah, yes I'm just sharing my screen so yeah so with regard to um, multiple degree of freedom so this multiple the degree of freedom is again a, a very important uh, concept with regard to mechanical so we've all studied this somewhere in physics or in our 11th grade uh, so it's again uh, it's again important uh, parameter or metric with regard to mechanical systems and machines. So eigenvalues and eigenvectors are used to understand the dynamic response of a mass string, of a mass spring system. So when I'm having a mass and I'm having a spring, right? So eigenvalues and eigenvector uh, is helping us understand the dynamic response of it. So uh, let's consider a system of equations. The system of uh, motion of multiple degree freedom mass spring is here. So and um, the displacement of the masses is given here. So displacement the, uh, where we're bringing a small change onto the uh, onto a given mass so for the problem in lecture with two mass of equal mass connected for the problem in the lecture with two masses so we're having two mass or uh, two weight bodies connected to spring so they, they're just hanging from somewhere of equal stiffness the mass m is given as um so this is the uh, this is the movement of the mass and the stiffness k is given as the mass is given as this and the stiffness k is given as this right so i can like uh, the real-time application of this is re with regard to our bridges. So we have all have a lot of bridges in our uh, cities, right? So there's sometimes a hanging bridge in all it. So there it's very important that this eigenvalue has to be maintained. A, a real-time example is a bridge itself collapsed, as I told you, because of uh, because the engineers had opted for a wrong eigenvalue. So to that uh, level, eigenvalue is very important. In a, in a, it plays such an important role in a real-time, in our day-to-day life. 
So eigen value and eigen vectors. So we now take a brief excursion to the properties of eigen vectors related to the matrices K and M. But the purpose will soon be clear. And consider the eigen pair for the generalized problem. So this is the kind of pair that we are mapping. By lambda is the eigen value and U is the eigen vector. The orthogonality of eigen vector. We are multiplying both the sides with the equation uh, with with the corresponding U transpose of J. And since the eigen vectors are orthogonal with respect to K and M, and if they were orthonorm if they were normalized such that U transpose M U I is equal to one, it follows that U transpose M U I. So this is the kind of equation that we give. This is with regard to the mathematical, I mean the mechanical perspective. So as we saw the previous session, both math both this machine learning goes hand in hand with the domain based application as well as the um, mechanical sorry as well as the machine learning perspective so when we go to the mechanical some person as a mechanical engineer should be there another person as a machine learning engineer should be there so the knowledge of both the people is required for us for us to get a better um, better system better model that, that's predicting and uh, classifying Right. So decoupling the modes, so since the eigenvector are linearly independent, we can use them as a basis to express our displacement vector. So they are um, using the eigenvectors to express the displacement vector. That is how much my weight body has moved. Where lambda are unknowns and taking the derivative uh, with respect to the time, we get, we get a certain equation and inserting these expressions. So um, we get the equation as m into summation lambda uh, lambda ui plus k into summation lambda ui is equal to zero and multiplying on both sides with respect to u the equation varies as so so from the orthogonal properties of the icon vector for the case i is not equal to j the above becomes a trivial zero is equal to zero when i is equal to j we get a um, ordinary differential equation so for every i and this is second order constant coefficient equation which is easy to solve right as we all know and we get the roots of the equation and this is the displacement vector when lambda is the natural frequency and ui is the vibration mode and the constant ai and bi are determined from the initial conditions so for a two cross for a two cross two system to get a complete solution we are we are obtaining the solution uh, based on it and we compute the eigen vector and eigen value of the generalized problem for k and m so from this we obtain um, we obtain the value of x so the motion of the mass that is a displacement x and um, so from here we see the motion of the initial conditions has been obtained and we compute the b1 and b2 using the numpy and anim animating the motion of mass for this case we just use a uh, matplot to see how the string is actually uh, moving here and there right so uh, what do we tell from this so what do we infer from this is that uh, the eigenvalue and the eigenvector will be helping us to identify the degree of freedom and helping us uh, select the direction uh, with regard to vibration of the body and also with regard to the motion of the body. Right? Like mapping it with respect to the previous example that we saw, bridge. So when it is a hanging, with the, how much uh, vib vibration intensity it can withstand. So this is the kind of applications that eigenvalue is used in the real time. Right. So, any doubts? Okay. Uh, Sanjay, is it possible to run the animation? So, yes, sir. So actually, it was like a very short uh, duration. So like, uh, so that's the reason. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> next two, two, three sessions when you're arriving, it will make it out according. It's not yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, participants, sorry for the inconvenience cost. Please come. Back. Last part of it. Last part of animation. Yes. So like basically, when you run from the first, only the last one comes. Yeah. I'll just directly try playing it. Yeah, I think it will play. No. Yeah. So it's telling us we are having two bodies and the two bodies are moving uh, one and fourth. So we are using eigenvectors and eigenvalue. We are uh, determining uh, what is the kind of 
a movement or in what are the directions this two body will move when it is given to a when it is given an external force so using this we'll be able to uh, determine what is the uh, way in which the body will move or what is the uh, or how far the body will move so when we are getting the eigen value so let us consider a hanging bridge so um, when it's given to an external force using when we can identify how far the hanging bridge will go when we when we are able to identify the eigen vector with the maximum eigen value because eigen vector with the maximum eigen value will tell us how far the system has elongated how far the system has moved so here when we are getting the uh, corresponding eigen vector with the highest eigen value we can determine how far the mass bodies has moved so we are we are basically hanging a two mass body using a string right so getting the eigen value of the getting the largest eigen value of the eigen vector will tell us how far the uh, spring body actually moved from our initial portion so let's say considering for bridge so how far the bridge actually moves when we are uh, putting it to an external pressure so like this is a kind of uh, interpretation of how it basically happens and then we'll go for a question session if there is any questions yes yeah, so sure any any queries Um, so, Sandhya, we thank you for your last minute way of uh, helping us in coming over to mathematics in data science. Whereas we, I think the participants should have got benefited and overall glance of how the mathematics could be applied in data science. And that's the way it had happened now. So, we thank Sandhya for taking up an efforts being with us for last two sessions. However, she is having two more sessions, two, two or three more sessions over the next, where she'll be talking more about neural networks, conventional neural networks, which was her specialization in which she done some more products based on that. On the last day session, she'll be showing a demo product, which was being winning a, winning a prize over there in Canada for, his, for its exhibition. So she'll be sharing some more projects and other things over there. So we thank her for her being with us and we thank all the participants and we all meet again for statistics in data science, which will be covering a basic statistics and the programming part of the statistics in Python. That will be at 2.30 from 2.4. So thank